Bhatra from Dr. Subhash Technical Campus and in today's lecture we are going to discuss about gyroscope. Okay, so let us start about gyroscope. So here in today's lecture we will discuss about introduction about gyroscope, representation of angular velocity, gyroscopic equation and gyroscopic effect on an aeroplane. So in today's lecture we are going to discuss about this four topic introduction about gyroscope, representation of angular velocity, gyroscopic equation and effect of gyroscope, gyroscopic principle on an aeroplane. So in the introduction, so my dear friends gyroscopes the basic principle of gyroscope is used in aeroplane, in automobile and in sea. So we have experienced that when we ride our bike on a cow path, on a cow road, then we have to tilt our bike. So we, we always, when we, we are riding our bike on a straight path, then our bike is a straight on a road. But when we make a turn, it may be a left turn or right turn, then we have to tilt our bike at some angle. This tilting is nothing but we, we tilt our bike because of gyroscopic effect. Okay, so we will discuss later on how this principle is used in aeroplane, in automobile and ships. Okay, so first things we know that we can say that gyroscopic principle is used in aeroplane in automobile and ship. How it will be useful in this aeroplane, automobile and ship, this will be, this will be see in the later on. So first of all, let us see the angular velocity. So my dear friends, we have already, we know that the velocity, linear velocity, so we can represent linear velocity by the vector. So, if you want to represent a linear velocity, if you want to represent a linear velocity, suppose there is a 5 meter per second, this is our linear velocity. So, we can represent this linear velocity by a vector by using some scale. Suppose we consider 1, cent, one centimeter is equal to 1 meter per second, then we have to represent a line that is a 5 centimeter length. So, this is the magnitude of velocity. And another thing, is a direction. So we know that our velocity is towards the right direction. So we can represent this 5 meter per second velocity as an AB vector. Okay. Same way we can represent angular velocity. So angular velocity we know that angular velocity is omega and the unit of this angular velocity is radian per second. So my dear friends to represent angular velocity we will need we require three terms first is the magnitude of the angular velocity that means suppose there is a 5 radian per second so this 5 radian per second it is the magnitude of angular velocity second thing is the direction of axis of rotor that means here we have considered one rotor Okay, this rotor is rotating with omega angular speed in a clockwise direction here. So, this direction of axis of rotor, this is the second thing. And third one is the sense of rotation of rotor. So, here this rotor, so here we can say that from this end we view, this is the observer end. So, this is the direction of rotor and sense. So, we know that any rotating body having two kind of sense, one is a clockwise, maybe a rotating body will rotate in a clockwise direction or maybe in anti-clockwise direction, okay. So, so if we have three things, that means magnitude, direction of axis of rotor and sense of rotation, then we can represent a angular velocity by a vector. So, by using here we are going to use a right hand screw rule. Right hand screw rule. 
So by using right hand screw rule, we can represent a angular velocity by means of vector. So let us see. So here, let us consider one rotor. This is rotor. Okay. Rotor having two end, A end and B end. Rotor is mounted on shaft. So this shaft, one end is A and another end is B. Now here we have considered observer. That means we are view this rotor from this end. So in this end, we we can say that our rotor is rotating in clockwise direction at an angular speed omega. Our rotor is rotating in clockwise direction at an angular speed of omega. Okay, so we can see that our rotor is rotating in clockwise direction. So how we can use this right hand screw rule? So by considering your right hand, okay, taking your okay. So we consider our right hand. Okay, now curl your fingers in the direction of rotation of rotor. So we know that our rotor is rotating in clockwise direction. So we consider we curl our finger in the direction of rotation of rotor, and the direction of thumb will represent the direction of vector. So here we have draw AB vector. So AB. So the AB, the length of AB is a magnitude of angular speed. Suppose there is a five radian per second is a angular speed in clockwise direction. Then we have to represent AB as a suppose five centimeter because we consider one radian per second is equal to one centimeter. So if we consider one centimeter is equal to one radian per second. So if we consider one centimeter is equal to one radian per second, then five radian per second is equal to five centimeter. So draw a line AB having length is five centimeter in the direction of in the axis in the direction of axis of rotor in the direction of axis of rotor okay so draw a line having length is 5 cm in the direction of axis of rotor so that means the axis of rotor ab is parallel to the small ab okay another thing now the direction that means ab so we draw our vector is ab so we represent in this way this is our vector ab so because the direction of rotor will be represented by the thumb, direction of thumb. So our thumb, direction of thumb is in this direction. So we draw a vector in this direction. And we know that the sense of rotation is clockwise direction. So this is a sense of rotation clockwise in a direction. So here we have represent the angular velocity by the vector. Same way, if we consider this rotor is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So here we have represent the sense by a rotated line. So if our rotor is rotating in anti-clockwise direction, then so if we see from this end, then we can see that our rotor is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. Then again use a right hand thumb rule. Okay, so we have to represent in this way. Our rotor is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So this is our right hand thumb rule okay so this is the we have to curl our finger in the direction of rotation so this is this is our finger we have curl and this is the direction of direction of rotation of angular speed so we here we have to represent v1 dash v b dash a dash so v dash a dash same again v dash a dash is a 5 centimeter length that means because of this scale Okay, and now we have to draw, represent this vector as a B dash A dash. So this is the direction of rotation. That means in this direction because according to the right hand screw rule. And our rotor is rotating in anti-clockwise direction. So this is the sense of rotation. Now let us see an angular acceleration. Okay, so first of all let us consider one rotor. So here we have considered one rotor is rotating about x axis. So we can say that rotor is spinning about x axis. So x axis is a spinning axis. Okay. And here we have considered the rotor is rotating with omega angular speed in a clockwise direction. So when we see from this end, then we can say that our rotor is rotating with omega angular speed in a clockwise direction. Okay. Now after some period of time. 
we will displace this axis of rotation through an angle delta theta okay so now the new axis of rotation of rotor or we can say that new axis of spin is equal to x dash that means o x dash is a new axis for the rotation of rotor so if we consider the change in angular velocity okay is omega plus delta omega okay so after rotation of the axis of rotor through an angle delta theta the new axis of rotation is o x dash and the new angular speed new angular speed of rotor is omega plus delta omega okay so let us consider this graph okay so here we represent the angular velocity of rotor as a oa so we know that according to the right hand screw rule our rotor is rotating in a clockwise direction okay so our rotor is rotating in a clockwise direction so we see from this end okay so if we consider this is the sense of rotation our rotor is rotating in clockwise direction so we curl our finger in the rotation of rotor and the direction of thumb will represent the direction of vector so here we represent oa is a vector oa is a vector represented by a omega okay so and this is the sense of rotation okay now when this axis of spin is displaced from this position to this position then we can now the new angular velocity is omega plus delta omega okay again we represent this velocity by a vector so according to the according to the right hand thumb rule so this is the sense of rotation of rotor and this is the direction of vector so we can represent another vector this is ob so ob is a vector represented by this velocity okay so ob is equal to omega plus delta omega and this is the sense of rotation okay now when the rotor is rotating on the ox axis then there is a velocity omega and now the rotor is rotating on the new axis ox dash then the velocity is omega plus delta omega that means there is a change in velocity and also change in the direction of velocity okay so this is a when it is a velocity vector when rotor is rotating on ox axis and this is a velocity vector when rotor is rotating on ox dash vector so there is a change in velocity as well as in a direction that means change in magnitude and direction okay so now if we connect join this ab line then ab will represent the change in the velocity okay now we represent ac and bc so ac is a change in the direction of rotor okay that means it is a change in velocity so there is a two component one is ac component another one is a bc component okay so we derive the change in velocity so first we derive change in velo change of angular velocity okay change of angular velocity along this oa so ac is a change in angular velocity ac so we can say that ac is equal to oc minus oa so oc we can say that oc is nothing but oc is equal to we can say that omega plus delta omega into cos delta theta so ac is equal to be right in bracket omega plus delta omega into cos delta theta minus oa so we know that oa is nothing but it is angular velocity of rotor so minus omega so now rate of change of angular velocity rate of change of angular velocity so if we differentiate this equation that means if we rewrite this equation rate of change of angular velocity is equal to in bracket omega plus delta omega into cos delta theta minus omega divided by delta t so this is a rate of change of angular velocity and we know that rate of change of angular velocity is nothing but it is angular acceleration so angular acceleration is equal to we can say that we rewrite this equation the limit delta t tends to zero in bracket omega plus delta omega bracket complete into cos delta theta minus omega upon delta t now we here we consider Limit delta t tends to zero, so we can say that delta t tends to zero, then delta theta tends to also become zero, and we know that cos delta theta is equal to one. We can say that because delta theta is e tends to zero, so we consider cos delta theta is equal to one. So if we put this value in this equation, then we get limit delta t tends to zero, omega plus delta omega. Here we put one minus omega upon delta t. So here omega omega. 
tensor so we get and the limit the uh, delta t tends to zero so delta omega become d omega so d omega by dt this is the equation number one and this is the acceleration this is the one component of acceleration there is a two component one is s e and another one is a b c so s e is equal to be get d omega by dt now another way another change of angular velocity okay so change of angular velocity c b so we can say that c b so this is c b okay change of angular velocity so we can say that this is omega plus delta omega and this is a delta theta so this component is omega plus delta omega into sin delta theta okay so we rewrite angular acceleration so angular acceleration means rate of change of angular velocity so this is angular velocity omega plus delta omega into sin delta theta upon delta t now here again the limit if we put the limit here then so if delta t tends to zero then we can say that delta theta tends to zero okay delta t okay so we we can say that sin delta theta is equal to delta theta okay so because this angle is very small so we can say that delta theta sin delta theta is equal to delta theta okay so here we put delta theta in place of sin delta theta so omega plus delta omega into delta theta upon delta t so here omega into delta theta plus delta omega into delta theta this is very small term so we neglect it and we get omega into delta theta upon delta t this is another term For me, also in general form, we can write the equation Q is equal to delta T over all divided by sigma R T S, and R T S is the thermal resistance of all slab.
rotation of its axis of spin. So OB. So again we can use this right hand thumb rule. So this is the direction of angular velocity of rotor. So OB is the angular velocity of rotor after rotation of the axis of spin through a angle delta theta. So we can say that AB. So AB is nothing but AB is a change in angular velocity. AB is a OA is a angular velocity when it is rotated to a OX axis and OB is a angular velocity of rotor when it is rotated to a new axis of spin that means OX axis. So AB, AB is a change in angular velocity. So here we write change in angular velocity is equal to AB. So we can say that this AB is nothing but it is omega into delta theta. So we can say that omega into sine delta theta. But here delta theta is very small, so we can rewrite omega into delta theta. So angular change in angular velocity of rotor is omega into delta theta. Now angular acceleration, we know that angular acceleration is equal to omega into delta theta by delta t. So in limit, if we consider delta t less to zero, then here we write delta theta is equal to delta d theta and delta t is equal to dt. So alpha is equal to omega into d theta by dt. So this is the angular acceleration of rotor when the rotor, when its axis of rotation will be changed, okay, through an angle delta theta. So here d theta by dt. So here we know that delta theta it is a rotation of axis of rotor in a delta t time. So that means it is also an angular velocity of axis. So we can say that we rewrite this equation omega into omega p. Now omega p is an angular velocity of axis of spin or it is also known as the axis of precession. So omega p is an angular velocity of axis of spin. So we, have, we get alpha is equal to omega into omega p. The rotor is rotating in clockwise direction when we see from this end. And so OX is an axis of spin because our rotor is rotating, rotating about OX axis. Okay. And when we rotate this OX axis through an angle delta theta, then OX is a new axis of rotor of okay. So we can say that OX is a new axis of spin for a rotor. And according to the right hand thumb rule, we have represent OA. So OA is a angular velocity vector of a rotor when it is rotating through a OX axis and OB is an angular velocity vector of rotor when it is rotating through a OX test axis. Okay, and AB, so AB is a change in angular velocity of rotor. And we have derived this equation, angular acceleration is alpha is equal to omega into omega p. So here omega is an angular velocity of rotor and omega p is an angular velocity of axis of rotor. Okay, so we can say that omega p is an angular velocity of precession. So let us consider the angular acceler acceleration torque. So we know that when we have to move this axis of spin through an angle delta theta, then we have to apply some torque. And this torque is known as an acceleration torque. So acceleration torque is equal to I into alpha, where I is a mass moment of inertia of rotor. Okay, so mass moment of inertia of rotor is I. So if we, I into alpha is a, our angular accelerating torque. So we can say that torque is equal to I omega into omega p. So here, this is a gyroscopic torque is equal to I omega into omega p. So where I is the mass moment of inertia of rotor, omega is the angular velocity of rotor and omega p is the angular velocity of precession. Or we can say that it is a precession velocity. Okay. So in this direction, we have to apply a torque. So AB is known as a applied torque or we can say that in AB direction we apply some torque. So this is our active couple or we can say that applied couple. Otherwise according to the Newton's law, 
when we apply some torque in this direction some reaction torque or reaction couple will also develop in opposite direction so this is a reaction couple now here we know that our rotor is rotating about ox axis so we can say that ox is a axis of spin okay why because our rotor is rotating about this axis so we can say that ox is a axis of spin now oz so this is oz so in this axis we, we know that our this axis is rotating in this way okay so oz is the axis of precession because we can say that our ox axis is rotated through an angle delta theta about z axis so oz will become axis of precession oy so oy this is oy so this is the axis of gyroscopic couple we know that in this in this direction in this plane in a x z plane in a x z plane in this plane some couple will be developed and this couple is gyroscopic couple so oy is the axis of gyroscopic couple in the same way yz so here we can see the yz this is yz plane okay so yz it is a plane of spin so if we see from this end then we can see that the pure rotation motion of rotor is shown in this plane so we can say that yz is a plane of spin then yx or xy this is xy plane so this is xy plane it is a plane of precision we know that if we want to see if we see from the top end then we can say that rotation of ox will be seen in a this plane so y x is a plane of precession and x z x z this is x z so this is a plane of gyroscopic couple okay so in this plane we apply some gyroscopic couple okay so in the next lecture we will discuss about the effect of gyroscopic couple on a plane thank you